We're heading east towards Yabello. This is a Barana territory. The arid terrain belonging to the Barana tribe straddles the border between Ethiopia and Kenya. The Barana are semi-nomadic herdsmen. They move from place to place according to the needs of their herds for food and water. But they have an additional source of riches in an extinct volcano. I follow the local villagers to the bottom of the crater. Instead of boiling lava, this volcano now produces a kind of salty earth. The rainy season has just finished and has left behind an iodized crust. The men do their best to protect themselves against the salt, which eats into their skin and burns their eyes. Salt remains a precious commodity. It is an essential part of the diet for both human beings and animals. The salt trade has always been lucrative and often a source of conflict. In ancient times, I'm told the crater was exploited by a Greek merchant who was so enormously rich, he had 300 donkeys and exported the salt to the Peloponnese. The village still depends on the crater for its survival. The salty earth is highly prized by local herdsmen. One bag sells for 30 burr, a little over a euro. You see this earth? It's for cows, not for humans. If we give them this to eat, they get fat and give lots of milk. Their meat tastes much better. This earth is in great demand. It helps to keep the cattle healthy. Business is good, but at the moment the work is very difficult. The water has risen because of the rains, so it's harder to get the salt. The bottom is maybe 12 meters down. It's very difficult. Only experienced workers can do this. It's not open to everyone. You see him, for example. He has brought up two bags. If he sells them at the market here, he'll get 30 burrs for the two of them. But if we take them to sell in Moyal, he could get 100 burrs for the two. It seems the ancient volcano will be producing its bountiful salty earth for many years to come. <laughs> My journey continues northwards. There are 300 kilometers to cover before we reach the capital, Addis Ababa. We're at an altitude of over a thousand meters above sea level. It's cool up here, and I feel like taking a break from the road. I meet Wakinche, Jene, and Alamche in their orchard. The three sisters are picking the fruit which Ethiopia is best known for, buna, or coffee. Coffee plants originally came from the Kaffir region of Ethiopia. It's the backbone of Ethiopia's export trade. Two million people are employed in the coffee industry. Each year, this army of workers harvests, sorts and roasts more than 200,000 tonnes of coffee beans to the delight of coffee drinkers from New York to Singapore. If there are lots of us working, we can harvest between 50 and 100 kilos. We collect the ripe beans and sell them straight away. But we also pick the dry beans and keep them until the following dry season. If we harvest 50 kilos, we'll earn 65 euros. I've been asked by the three girls and their mother to stay for a taste of the precious dark liquid. In Ethiopia, coffee beans are consumed in a variety of ways. Before it became known as a drink, Ethiopians ate the beans, grilled or mixed with butter, as a tasty snack. And the beans are still said to have excellent medicinal properties. Up until 1850, coffee consumption was forbidden by the Ethiopian church. But under the emperor Menelik, the government began to encourage coffee consumption and exploit its export potential. 
Being invited in for coffee is an important part of hospitality here. The traveller must accept the three cups of coffee offered. To refuse is considered bad luck as well as impolite. In any case, I don't have to be asked twice. At last, one for the road. I never seem to stay in one place for long. But I'm stopping off at Arba Minch in the Neshisa. The town sits above the twin lakes of Abaya and Shamo, separated by a stretch of land known as Paradise Bridge. The next morning, the vast open spaces of Lake Shamo. I used to dream of places like this, and I'm reminded of books I read as a child. It's a huge thrill to see the rich variety of wildlife at close quarters. Ethiopia is a genuine Noah's Ark home to more than 40 native species. The government is trying to protect these fragile ecosystems. It's encouraging ecotourism and has announced major campaigns against the poaching of protected species, such as elephant and Nile crocodile. For the people living on its shores, the lake is above all a means of survival. I want to meet one of the fishermen who spreads his nets over this hostile environment. Exploring the shores of the lake, I come across a makeshift camp. Tatek and his companions have permission to fish on the lake. He's 33 years old and dreams of going back to school and getting a better job away from these waters. For now though, he's starting his week's work. If I get here on Monday, I don't leave until Saturday. I stay the whole week. I spend Sunday at home with my family and have a rest. On Sunday night, I make the journey back here. That's our routine. But there are some fishermen who spend a whole month by the lake without seeing their family. You want me to tell you about crocodiles? Many friends of mine have died. We didn't find their bodies, only their clothes. Sometimes you find their remains after they have been torn to pieces. But we can't bury them. They disappear into the lake. Sometimes we are attacked by hippos. Two of my friends were killed not very long ago. We also have to watch out for the wind. When it's strong, it can capsize the boat and even break it up on the water. But the crocodiles are what we fear most. They have eaten a lot of people. I'm amazed at their courage as they take to the water in these simple rafts made from rough-hewn logs. I admire these men who risk their lives by venturing onto the lake every day to bring in their nets. On a good day, they might earn 20 euros. But such abundant catches are becoming increasingly rare. Tatek tells me there are too many fishermen and that ever-increasing demand for fish is exhausting the stocks. but he still hopes that his dream of a new life will come true one day. <laughs> 